Morning. I might be biting off more than I can chew with this uh, line and wash with the acrylic, black acrylic paint, but I want to try to do a stream and I, I, when you do running water it's, it's effective you really have to study it but what happens if it's coming down over little weirs and little waterfalls the top of the water where it's, it's horizontal queuing up to drop over the, the rocks is reflecting what's behind in, in sort of darker paint, a dark, dark, darker colour. Like so, let's just put it in. So we've got. I try not to repeat myself too much. Uh, now, a bit, bit of water, and we'll just show some bit of just tumbling down. And then some more dark, reflecting behind. And then we've got uh, the the, uh, the water sort of coming up again from the like all the bubbly stuff, and then coming down there. So I'll try to do something like that. That is a repeat of that, but then. This is a danger when you you do something, you think, well, that was good, then you go, you go and do it again. And then we'll uh, do some rocks. So I'm just using ordinary black acrylic paint. And then we'll, we'll put some darker rocks sticking in across here and we'll show the, the water tumbling around around there. So something like that with the, the rock. I'll probably use my scrapers to do some of this. Okay so now we want to build up around that now so uh, we'll Glasses, all sorts of stuff here. It all looks attractive when you start because it's a contrast between the black and the white. But when we apply the paint to it, it, uh, it cuts out some of the, the, the obvious contrast. So I will uh, do some trees and, and stuff here. I was thinking of doing some silver birches like this, but I'm not sure I, will come, I could do it with that bit of practice. Uh, This would be the bark peeling off. Not enough white left on that. But. And with silver birch, you you get small branches. So just build up a bit of a foreground here. A little bit bigger there. Eh? 
not brilliant, but. They're quite a uh, steady hand, aren't they? Just uh, weaken that paint a little bit. Okay, we could just keep working this for hours, but I don't really want to, otherwise you might get a bit bored. Uh, I'll put in some watercolour trees in the background, uh, just, just strengthen up a little bit here and there. Just some shadows and grasses just sticking up, just give an impression that there's something going on. Okay. So they're very sketchy, but they're good enough. A swig of tea. Th these things are, will have endless possibilities. I don't know where I'm going, I'm just making it up as I go along, from experience really. So there's our water there, now we're going to surround that with a bit more, some rocks. Some grasses. I'll do, I'll, I'll do my, as I said earlier, I'll, I'll do my watercolour rocks with a scraper because that really does add a bit of je ne sais quoi. And have some twigs and more trees coming up here. I'll do it like that. Experimental, that looks a little bit better than the ones on the right at the moment. I love silver birches, they have these little lovely little leaves on in summer. And they've got these spindly branches just sort of coming off. Let's get some heavier stuff. When you get around to the painting, make sure that the acrylic paint is really dry, otherwise you'll just dilute it all over the place. Get more water in there. So I would call it silver birches in a, and a uh, waterfall or something like that. See what it turns out like. Okay, that'll do. So we'll just put in some stuff. I won't do the same on the, the left as the right. So I'll just. Bushy stuff. Stuff. Right, just with a bit of paint on the brush. Oh. 
and then put a bit of detail in those scrubby bushes and then I can build up the background with some just pure watercolour just bury some of that in the shadow there And when you finish doing your drawing with your nice rigger, then make sure it's really, really clean. Okay, so that that is about all I'm going to do for that, for the drawing. So I'll put the lid aside. So there, there it is. That's just my old lid. It's off, a, it's off one of my beer malt cans from the home, the kits I make. And I keep them because they make lovely little pallets. <coughs> my my palette has been kept moist. I haven't done a painting since last Saturday morning. I uploaded it Saturday. It's the one the, between the dunes. It's lined and washed with using acrylic paint. But it didn't upload to YouTube for some reason. So I had to. We we went away for the weekend till, till yesterday morning. And uh, we got back about 12-ish, half 11, and I uploaded it again. So I've no, no painting since, since Saturday. So my palette has been kept nice and moist in, in, the, in the Ziploc bag, just, just taken it out. So I, I gave it a bit of a spray before I... It's, it's still, just still down. Great idea from, from Maria Kellner. Right, I'll uh, just dry this off. Now you have to make sure that your paint, as I say, is very, very dry. So take your headphones off. There I go. Right, now I'm, I, I want to keep the light in the middle, but I don't want to do the whole lot as, as the wood. I want the wood out here um, with some sky. So um, we'll, don't mix up the, the acrylic water with the watercolour water. So I'll wet the paper all over. So it's wet and wet. The, the, the paper is Fabriano, 130 pound weight. Very good paper for wet and wet. See, it's just a little bit damp there. Okay, so we'll put in some raw sienna in the background. These are student quality pens. See, nice and soft. Look. What a difference it makes using paint, almost tube consistency. You don't have to scrub it. Right, okay, and then we'll put in a bit of, bit of blue. Look at that, it's really... Right, now when you brush the splits, just bring it back together. And a bit of cloud, so I miss a bit of light red with the blue, and we've got a nice bit of a cloud cover. Color. Right, okay, so this is that water coming down there a bit. Right, now because you don't need to stretch this paper by pre wetting it and, with, and gumming it to a ball, as it expands, just re clip it. Give it a good stretch, it's very durable, very tough. The paints I'm using are Cotsman watercolours, 21mm tubes, Windsor and Newton. 
Right, uh, now I'm just letting that go off a little bit. I'm just going to be a bit of a dry. Take your headphones off. No more than that. I just I, I, I don't want the paints to just to bleed too much into the wet wetness. I want some bit of strength. So a bit of alizarin with the blue. So. Oh, a bit of, uh, bit of this. Okay, so that's our, that's a bit of background. Let's get that up there a little bit. And then we'll put a bit of, oh, we've got a bit of a storm. Brewing up. So a bit of lemon yellow, a um, bit of sienna, okay so sienna, a bit of raw burnt sienna as well. Now that's got a bit dry so I'm going to give that a bit of a loosen. Vary the, the colours and we've got a bit of shadow in there as well so we can put, put that in, a bit of blue and a bit of red. Right, okay, now a bit of, bit of sienna. In here. Ooh, rain. Okay, now we're going to go for these rocks now. So, a bit of blue, a bit of red, a bit of umber, a bit of Payne's grey. Nice warm. Nice warm, rocky colours. Okay, while that's wet, let's go in with the card and just, just scrape the tops off. There's a bit of uh, background to those trees now, we, we can see some with the, with the hake. Working fast, the red, a bit of sienna. Oh, we just... Let's just get in some some over the, some foliage over that. Keep the distant look. Right, 
Right. Let's go in with some more blue. Oh, just just hinting at some trees in the background in blue. Okay. <coughs> I'll try that off. Some headphones off. We can call this sort of, sort of a wintry scene, bit of a re-clip. Quick swig of tea. Now, I'm going to put, put some sort of a wintry sort of leaves on these trees. So, the way to do that is dry your brush off, your hake. I'm presuming you're using one. Right, put it all up so we can put it into the uh, into the paints grey. I'll just show some leaves left on the trees. Not much more than that, really, and. Clean the hake, get my rigger, and put in some blue on the. Oh, I'm going to register it, maybe. Oh, a bit, bit of sienna. Bit of sienna. Bit of sienna. So it's nice and soft now. Bit of the raw sienna. Very thick. Okay, let's uh, like to put a figure in these things. Give scale to everything. I've got to do the bit of dry brush on the water yet, so we'll put um, some of standing standing here. Now, bit of bit of dry brush now. So, just a bit of bit of dark. That'll do. I want to keep that that uh, water as as reflective as possible. Uh, right, let's give it a signature. and see what we've done. Might be a little bit uh, muddy overall, but uh, but you have to try with these things and use what imagination you have. I haven't got the greatest imagination, far from it. Some reeds in here. Okay, uh, the bird. Right, put it in the uh, blue mount. Let's see what we've done. There we are, but that not too bad. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's uh, zoom in and have a have a look. Let's bring the camera around a bit. So there's there's the water. 
limpid but just rushing away at the bottom uh, my little man just to give scale to everything now you know how big everything is he might even be a little bit too small because that tree silver birch yeah, it can be very very large um, I won't make him any larger all right let's come across to that one See, very sketchy, but trying to capture the sort of freshness of a scene. And you don't really want to overwork it. One of the great painters for with watercolour that doesn't overwork is John Tookie. T-O-O-K-E-Y. John Tookie. Marvellous. Fresh, clean. Says it all with a minimum of strokes, but then that's... A lot, lot of experience to do that. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now. I'll just pull out a bit. There we go.